be where they are without the dedication and an unwavering support of their fans. These loyal fans not only fill venues, but also bring an infectious vibe that fuels the performance. However, despite the relationship between bands and their fans, there are moments when the line between pure adoration and intrusion blurs. Some fans just don't understand the concept of boundaries, so they spark tensions between themselves and the bands they love. While many rockers thrive on the energy of their fans, some are just out of control. So during these times when the lines are crossed, band members can't help themselves. They flip out at their own fans. Here are some of the remarkable moments when bands had no choice but to flip out at their fans while live on stage. David Draymond Disturbed. So what is so important going on in the world that you need to be texting the entire fucking show? When bands perform, they definitely prefer it when their fans give them their full attention because they're performing for them after all. However, some fans just can't stop themselves from checking their phones even while at a concert. This is what happened in a Disturbed concert in 2016. During a concert's encore, David Draymond, Disturbed's frontman, noticed a woman in the front row who was apparently more engaged in texting on her phone than being present and participating in the show. Although video footage from the concert suggested that David wasn't angry during his rant, he did single out the woman to tell her to engage in the show. David said it was rude to be texting while they were performing. The rant from David didn't end on stage because later he went to Facebook to talk about how upsetting it was to see fans more engaged in their phones than the show. His post on Facebook came before the woman, Shannon Pardue, gave her side of the story, though. In an interview, Shannon revealed that she tried to tell the frontman that she was reaching out to her kids to make sure that they were okay because there was a storm, but he was unable to hear her explanation. When Shannon's side of the story was revealed, David admitted that he felt bad about what he did. He offered an apology for speaking without knowing the full context of the situation. In an interview, he said, When I did what I did, it wasn't me trying to push her away. It was a matter of me trying to engage her. He later concluded his message by saying, I feel badly about it, and I'm sorry. I never want anyone to leave one of our shows feeling badly. Tom Araya, Slayer Every fan wants to get up and close with their favorite band. However, some just take it too far. And as they say, if you F around, you'll find out. That's exactly what happened during Slayer's Live Intrusions tour in 1995. In the middle of Slayer's performance, an overexcited fan managed to get on stage. Tom Araya didn't let the fan celebrate his achievement though, because as soon as the fan got close to him, he kicked him off the stage, making him fly back to the crowd. All this Tom managed to do without stopping his performance. Although Tom found it funny because he laughed as soon as the fan fell down the stage, some fans felt that what Tom did was unnecessary. Regardless of what anyone thinks though, that fan will surely think twice before going up on stage during a performance. Billy Corgan Smashing Pumpkins <laughs> Fortunately, not all band members become physical when fans get up on stage, but it's still embarrassing to hear one of your favorite band members flipping out at you. This was the case for a Smashing Pumpkins fan during their 2016 show in Memphis. During a performance of the Rolling Stones classic Angie, an audience member happily hops up on stage right next to Billy, bobbing his head along to the groove. Well, the fans' happiness did not last long because Billy was having none of it. Without even sparing a look at the fan, Billy stops the song and says with all the venom in his voice, Get the F off my stage before I punch you in the effing face. The fan didn't have to be told twice, but he didn't seem all that bothered either. He simply shrugs and walks off the stage while the crowd goes wild. As if the exchange didn't happen, the band continued the song right where they left off. Greg Graffin, Bad Religion Some fans just want to have their five seconds of fame. At least that's what Greg Graff and a bad religion thinks. At the 1996 Doctor Music Festival in Spain, an elated fan managed to go up on stage in the middle of bad religion set. Greg at first didn't mind. He even entertained the fan with a smile on his face, talking to him and asking him questions. That might have been one of the best moments of the fan's life, but things didn't exactly turn out as positively as everyone hoped. After disturbing the band's set for an extended period of time, Greg quickly lost his patience. 
His smile quickly turned into an angry frown as he said he had his moment in the spotlight. Greg still tried to get a hold of the situation, but the fan wouldn't stop acting unstable, so Greg did what he thought would make the fan stop. He pushed him to the side of the stage as forcefully as he could, making the fan leave the stage in pure embarrassment. Wes Scantlin, Puddle of Mud. You got me at money. Fuck it. This motherfucker right here stole my motherfucking house. Puddle of Mud fans aren't strangers to West Scantlin's meltdowns. In fact, there have been many cases of Puddle of Mud sets getting cut short because of Wes. However, there was one incident in 2015 when his meltdown was aimed at an audience member. In the middle of a show in Ohio, Wes suddenly went off on an audience member, saying that he stole his house and was laughing at him. He said, This mother effer right here stole my mother effing house, and now he's standing right effing here in front of me, laughing at me, and he effing figures I'm an effing joke. He goes on and on about the mother effer. Well, that was definitely a lot of F-bombs. To no one's surprise, Wes stormed off the stage, and another puddle of mud show ended before time. As for the house, it wasn't really stolen from Wes. It was most probably about his house that he lost the year before due to foreclosure. Billy Joe Armstrong, Green Day. We all know Billy Joe Armstrong for his strong personality. He's never afraid to voice out what he thinks. He's also not afraid to drop kick a fan when he has to. During their performance at the Fillmore in San Francisco in 1997, Billy Joe noticed an upsetting behavior in the crowd. Throughout the gig, he couldn't help but see a male fan behave rudely towards a young girl in the crowd. So in true Billy Joe fashion, he paused their performance and yelled at the microphone, Hey, why don't you come here, you little mohawk mother effort? You want to fight? I'll fight right now. Come on, get up here on stage. The fan, frightened, declined to go up on stage for a fight, so Billy Joe did what he had to do. He took matters into his own hands, jumped in the crowd, and handed out a good beating. Green Bay bassist Mike Durnt followed up by saying, Sorry, but these people didn't come here to put up with your S. Of course, the crowd didn't fail to recognize the heroic act and met the band with even more applause. Dave Grohl, The Foo Fighters. Hey, in the striped shirt, look at me right here, motherfucker. Look at me, look at me. Get the f out of my show right now. Get the f out. Dave Grohl's known as the nicest man in rock, but don't be fooled because he can still unleash his wrath on you. In the middle of the Foo Fighters set at the 2011 iTunes Festival in London, Dave had to stop their performance because he spotted two fans fighting. He screamed out at the initiator through his microphone saying, You don't effing fight at my show, you a-hole. Who's that right there? Let me see him. Who's fighting right now? Let me see him. Is that the effing guy in the striped shirt right there? Hey, mother effer, look at you. Hey, look at me. Hey, in the striped shirt. Get the F out of my show right now. It would be a humiliating experience for any fan to be called out by the nicest man in rock, but some fans definitely deserve it. Once the crowd settled and cheered for Dave, he told him, I don't put up with that BS. You people come here to have a good time. That guy can F off. The set was then picked up right where they left off, with no more fights happening in the crowd. Maynard Keenan, Tool. Knowing things about our favorite band members firsthand is a great experience for any fan. However, that's not always the case, especially not for a fan who had to learn firsthand that Maynard Keenan, Tool's frontman, is actually legit when it comes to Brazilian Jiu Jitsu. Back in 97, during Tool's performance, a fan somehow got on stage and approached Maynard with arms open wide. Maynard did the same, and everyone thought he'd hug the fan, but that's not what happened. In a surprising but amusing turn of events, Maynard successfully used a hip toss judo throw on the fan, which quickly put the fan to the ground. From there, Maynard threatened a rear naked choke, but what was really amusing during all this was the fact that Maynard was still singing, as if this was a normal occurrence for him. The band continued to play as Maynard had the fan in mount throughout the remainder of the song. When the song ended, the fan was released from the awkward position he was put in. Although the fan had nothing but good intentions, Maynard didn't want to risk being assaulted on stage. The fan just chose the wrong frontman to approach on stage, though. Well, lesson learned, learn martial arts. Fans are thankful for the fans that they have, but everyone should understand that there are boundaries, especially when the bands are giving a performance. Although not all the instances where the bands flipped out at their fans were necessary, it's a lesson learned for many of the fans. Even during an intense and high-energy rock performance, boundaries should still be in place. Otherwise, you might just get tackled to the ground by your favorite frontman.